Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all ready to get sharpened today? Yeah. 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 Sharpen that sword. Amen. Uh, a lot of questions are going to get answered on this topic. We're going to talk about start a whole new series. Job series is so long, I'm not even done with it yet. Uh, you, you know how the kingdom of God works. I'm still not done with that one, but uh, in the shower, and the Holy Spirit said, we're going this direction. Last minute. He does that, so I'll listen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a good idea, right? So that's yeah. Be yeah. Yeah. Be More than a good yeah. idea. <laughs> so we're going with baptism and the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Baptism and the Holy Spirit series. We're going to cover, we're going to start today, uh, cover it from Scripture, what Scripture has to say about it. Then, we're going to cover what it is and what it isn't. And, and we're going to answer a lot of questions, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of questions, a lot of myths, a lot of uh, truths, you know, blah, 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 both sides about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right? Uh, this is a, the second most important part of your walk, besides giving your life to Christ, coming into the kingdom, receiving salvation. This is the second most important part of it. Uh and I'm going to sound redundant because I'm going to be saying some things that I'm going to cover in the next two series. But, you know, part of that is, yes, you can be saved and get to heaven without it. So it's not about that. But it's just about, it's mainly about your walk here <laughs> and how successful you want to be here. Mm -hmm. right. Um, right. I, I mean, I wouldn't understand why you wouldn't want all of what God has. Amen. If I give you a million bucks, would you accept a million or would you accept only ten bucks? Say, oh brother, I'm good. I'll just I'll just take ten brothers, my brother. I'm good. You know, you can keep the other, you know, I'll just accept the ten. You would take the whole million, wouldn't you? Amen. Wouldn't you? Amen. Alright, so God has given us gifts for a reason that uh we should take advantage of. You know, and honestly, as a whole, the church is wondering why a lot of them are getting their bus whooped. This is part of the reason. You, you don't have that power that you need. It's like, without being baptized in the Holy Spirit, this is my favorite slang. It's like taking on a hill with a water pistol. <laughs> right? <laughs> they laughing at you. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you don't need more fire and power than that. That's my point. You don't need more ammo. Water. Amen? The water gun? Yeah, yeah, but you don't need more firepower than that to take on the forces of hell because they are after your soul and, and they have one job to do. They don't have nothing else to do, brothers and sisters. Yeah, right. All right. They know the end of the book, too, and they know what their end is and where they head. So they are what we call a hater and trying to take as many people with them. Once they can't do that, then they're trying to distract you from other things here. All right, so this is going to help you, all right, be successful in your walk with God here. All right? With that being said, we just go cover scripture today uh, because faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You know, uh, faith come by hearing, not by inquiring minds want to know. Okay? <laughs> uh, faith come by hearing, not by your, your, or your evening news. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. You want faith in whatever <coughs> category you can think of, whatever situation you want to think of from God, it's going to come from here. That's where your faith will come from. All right? That's where your confidence is going to come from. That's where the truth is going to come from. We can go on and on and on about it. It's all going to come from here. So, let's go to Acts. You spoke lightly on Acts today already. I was like, okay, that's confirmation. You covered that. Now, again, I'm going to start redundant. I'm going to cover this in what the baptism in the Holy Spirit is, but I'm going to cover these two scriptures today as well because they're important. So, Jesus told them, Acts chapter 1, verse 5, no, 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them, commanded them. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask. He commanded right. them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Somebody say wait. Wait. Wait, wait for the promise of the Father, 
which shall he, he have heard of me? And he's talking about being back on the Lord. So I just want to talk about that. Verse 4. He said, wait. Don't go nowhere. All right? Don't, don't be out there preaching. Don't be out there setting people free. Don't be out there telling them about him. Don't, don't do nothing. Wait here until the promise comes. Right. And, and we know the promise was prophesied, I think it's Joel 2.25, I could be wrong in, in the verses, but I know it's in Joel somewhere, where he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So that's what he's talking about. But he said, wait, mm -hmm. don't go nowhere. Now, if the, tw if the 12, 11 here, soon to be 12, had to wait, if Jesus told them to wait, what makes us think we don't have to wait? Or, or we have to initiate this process before we go out into the world and be a witness and do what we have to do. Yeah. See, and that's part of the misconception, brothers and sisters, is that we feel that, oh, you know, I don't need that to get to heaven. True. But there's a reason why he said wait. Because we need to receive this gift and this, and as we'll talk about later in the verse, this power to be a witness for him. All right, so, uh, and without it, you're going to be a weak witness, mm. and hell is going to have its day with you. You know, it, it's 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 not going to be pleasant. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be miserable. And blah blah blah. I can go on and on and on about how important it is. How Jesus told them to wait. We must wait. Now, what what is the how? What should salvation look like? This is how we should go. It doesn't always work this way, but this is what it should look like. Give your life to Christ. Yes. Right then, baptize in the Holy Spirit. Right then. And I'm going to cover, again, what it is and what it isn't, and how it's a separate account. Okay, so it's not the same in the sense of once you give your life to Jesus, you also have to take the initiation to also be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a separate account, and we're going to cover that. But that's how it should go. Mm -hmm. Give your life to Jesus, baptize in the Holy Spirit. Ready to go be a witness. Let's go to verse 8. Uh, but ye shall receive power. Somebody say power. 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 After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and to all Judea and to Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Hmm. Now again, redundancy. Uh, when you become a believer, yeah. the you you, you you have Jesus inside of you. Amen. So Amen. here's a good picture. All right. Uh, when you become a believer, you have Jesus in you. Because it says, I think in Romans chapter 8, I think it's verse 9, that if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you don't have, you, you know, you don't have God. So you have to have, you are joined together with one spirit once you become a believer. All right. On the inside. Now. Once you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's like the Holy Spirit is upon you. Mm -hmm. So, not just in you, but upon you. I heard the example of riding a horse. You know, how you get upon a horse and you're controlling it as you're, as you're riding the horse. You know, that's the same description or a good example of how the Holy Spirit is now upon you. You are baptized. You are submerged in the Holy Ghost. So, now you have given him permission for you to go out and have that power to be a witness unto others in the world. Mm -hmm. Alright? So so at salvation, and I'm gonna cover this again, you have Christ, but now back to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is upon you for power purposes. Alright? So let's go to uh Acts chapter 2, verse 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. And suddenly here, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Mm. And there uh, appeared unto them glowing tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so that's the first encounter. Now, I really feel I have to cover this because people, a, a, a lot of the church think that it's, a, it's the same encounter when it's a different encounter. So, 
How many people would say before this that the 12 disciples were saved? Would y'all say they were saved or they oh, weren't yes. saved? Amen. Okay, so they were already saved. But Jesus, even though they were saved, mm -hmm. Jesus still told them to wait. Right. And now we've just seen that, this is the first encounter, that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost as a spirit and and spake in other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. But they were all filled with the Holy Ghost for the first time <coughs> as Joel prophesied in the upper room at Pentecost. Pentecost was last week, I believe. It was last Sunday. That just means 50, 50 days after the resurrection. You know, they all had to wait. You know, Jesus showed himself to the apostles and others for 40 days. And then they had to wait the other 10 in the upper room. And then here come the Holy Spirit. Which Jesus told them where to point. So they can receive power. <coughs> and they talk about speaking in tongues and all of that. But they receive power with the evidence of speaking in tongues on that day. Alright, so it's a separate account. Now they're ready to go out. Amen? Amen. And my point, we should be doing the same. There should be salvation. There should be baptism in the Holy Ghost for that power. Power just means ability. Now you have the ability to take on this world. Uh, you have given the Holy Spirit permission <laughs> to do everything that he has to do upon you. Meaning now you're limitless. There is no ceiling now. Right. Like, right. like you can go beyond measures. Again, the redundant part. There have been people that have done miracles. And have done great work with that husband and holster. Like Billy Graham. You know, Billy Graham didn't really believe in anybody. He had a, a lot of lives saved. But I've always said there was there is always more. There's always more that somebody could have done that wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit. For instance, people that are baptized in the Holy Spirit are, are usually pretty good at setting people free. You know, part of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is that you open yourselves up for the spiritual gifts. You know, um, as we talked about before, uh, let's see, just a couple people. William Branham was good at word of knowledge. Uh, Catherine Coleman, you know, she was really powerful back in the day. And they would have meetings and people would just come in and people would get set free, healed, delivered. You know, and that's just an example of, of what I'm talking about as more of, you know, somebody like Billy Graham or Alexander Dowie, they did a lot of great things, but there could have been more. Like, there could have been more people set free. You know, they could have had a word of knowledge for somebody that could set them free. Blah, 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 blah. We can go on and on and on about how much more it could have been. Amen? So it's not that. It's not a love thing, because we know nothing can separate you from the love of God. Okay? So we know it's not a love thing. We know it's not a salvation thing, because you can't get to heaven without it. But it's about that. Power and being a witness and going out and having everything you need to be successful in your walk, in your inner circle. All right, because everyone in here has an inner circle. All right, Amen. God is not going to use the world, God is going to use the church. We are the church, we are His body, and He's going to use us as conduits to go out here and set, free, set people free, preach the gospel, preach the good news. Get people delivered, blah, 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 blah. We can go on and on and on. But he's going to use the church. He's going to use us. All right? So we need that power because the forces of hell are busy. But the Holy Spirit is busy. So there's a counteract. You know, we don't have to be scared or fear nothing or concerned about how busy the enemy is because the Holy Spirit is also busy. Mm -hmm. and, and we have that once we baptize the Holy Spirit, we have that power to go out and be a witness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It, it, it is it is crucial. It is essential. Not essential in the sense of being saved, but essential for your walk. All right. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter four. Let's go to Acts 4, 29. 
And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. This is, just a side note here, this is part of my prayer for y'all every day. Amen. Y'all want to know what I'm praying for you? Uh, it's, it's in Ephesians, it's in the Colossians, it's in Philippians, and this one. This is what I pray for the church every day. By stretching forth they hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Now, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spank the word of God with boldness. So, boldness again. We can go to Peter. Remember Peter? He cursed a lot. Okay? This is back in the Gospels, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He cursed a lot. And what did Jesus tell him? He said, you're going to deny me three times. You know? And he looked at him and said, you know, no I'm not. You know, it, it just dawns on me that if Jesus said, okay, you're going to go out here and somebody will come across the sidewalk and you go deny me in front of them. Wouldn't you try everything you know to do not to do that? <laughs> it, it just, I mean, this is sidetracking a little bit, but it's like, he just told you what you're going to do and you still did it. That, that's just, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so he said you're going to deny me Three times, and then he did. Right? Y'all remember that part in the Gospels? Yeah. yeah. So now, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I mean, we can go throughout the books of Acts. Peter can't shut up about Jesus. <laughs> At all. <clears throat> he can't shut his mouth about the Lord now. Why? Because that boldness comes. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, that boldness, as we just read in verse 31, they spank the word of God with boldness. You want some boldness? You want to go out here and be bold? Allow the Holy Spirit to submerge you and, and, just, and just drench you and cover you with His power. You will be bold. It's been tons and tons of testimonies of people that are, uh, what's that, uh, afraid to speak in front of people? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And after they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, they just can't shut up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Y'all might not think this. And my wife and my nine-year-old told me I talk a lot yesterday, and I disagree with them. I don't talk a lot. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm a quiet person. Anyway, I said that to say is that y'all don't know this, but I would rather be sitting in the back observing. Uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm an observer. I'll just, I, I like to chill, as you call it. You know, I'm a very chill person. Quiet, and I'd rather just be sitting in the back just observing and, and taking in information. That's what I would rather be doing. All right, so I'm, I'm not this, you know, when God called me to teach, this wasn't, it wasn't uh, intuitive. You know, I, I, it, it, didn't, it didn't come by nature. I'm not some person that just get up in front of people and talk, believe it or not. <laughs> okay? Like... Right. That's not originally who I am, all right? Yeah. But that Holy Spirit brought that boldness. You know, I, I mean, I will tell Jesus about anybody, and I believe, and I'm going to give credit to, and this is my story, and I'm sticking to it, is <laughs> baptism in the Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. It, it is that, is that, is where that boldness comes from, Amen. all right? Amen. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 15 years old at a church retreat, and I spoke in tongues, you know, so... Since that happened, it's hard for you to convince me that uh, this has stopped with the apostles. This is, this is not for us today. Blah, blah, blah. It's just hard for you to convince me of that because I've experienced it. Amen. You know, and, Amen. And, and I'm walking in it as we speak with boldness. And we're going to talk about it. And with power. Amen. You know, my Amen. favorite miracle is, and this is on our website, Lady at Costco. Uh, you know, I'm just going out doing my thing, and I love ministering to people when I'm in public in the stores and stuff. Couple, walk up to a couple, how y'all doing, start the conversation. Lady said, I'm barren, can't get pregnant, I would love to have a baby. I said, fine, we can pray right now. Didn't matter that they was uh, 
uh, uh, saved or not, you know, God just wanted to set people free. Didn't matter that we was in Costco. We don't have to get religious. We didn't need a crowd singing, you know, you know, we didn't need angels singing, you know, above, you know, for there to be a good presence. <laughs> just lay hands on her. I got that from Mark 16. Lay hands on the sick and they share with her. Faith on my hearing and whatever to God. Lay hands on her. All right? So, and y'all can see this on my website. I, I go back to Costco six months later, some lady waving me down. I'm like, who is this? You know, so I go up to her like, hey, she said, hey, remember me? I'm like, no. She said, look. Yeah. I'm like, what? And you pregnant? She's like, yeah, remember? I'm like, am I dumb behind? Oh, yeah, okay. I'm back with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember I prayed for you. And she was, she was about seven months pregnant. Power. Right, right. Amen. Any of y'all can do that. This isn't for the fivefold ministry. Okay? And that's what I want y'all to understand. That I'm not some special person. Actually, it says in Colossians chapter 1, God has called the weakenings of the world. Yes. You know, so, so I mean, so y'all should be able to see me and be like, God can use him. God can use anybody. <laughs> that's what y'all should be able to say about me. And it's true. Yeah. That can happen for all of y'all. But I give credit to what? That Gosh. power. Holy Spirit. Yep. God and that power. Yeah. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Speaking boldness. Amen? Amen. And I'll go on and on and on about testimonies and that. I don't have time for it right now. But that's my favorite miracle so far. So let's go to Acts chapter 8. What we are proving is that we're proving that baptism in the Holy Spirit is scriptural. Amen. That's what we're doing. Because faith comes in hand in hand by the word of God. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verses... Uh, Let's see, let's go with uh, 14. Acts chapter 8, verse 14. Now when apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read that again. Now when the apostles which were in, at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. So that means that they had received the word and were saved. This is again, and we're going to start redundant, and I'm going to cover this again about what the Holy Spirit is, I mean, or what baptism and the Holy Spirit is, is that it's a separate account. Like, don't count it as I received salvation, and that also came with it. God wants you to take an initiation with both, with receiving Christ and then asking to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to Amen. receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. So they had received the Word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So they were already saved. Right. They received the word of God, you know, because it says in what? First Peter, I think it's 2.23. We are born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed, which is the word of God was lived in the body forever. All right. Some, somehow, some way, we all got saved because the seed of the word was planted in us. Whether it was your grandmother, whether it was your mom, whether whoever. Somebody planted a seed, and then somebody else came and watered it, and God gave the increase. That's how we all got saved. So then they said, they received the word. Peter and John came down, and they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So there is another example of being baptized in the Holy Spirit in Scripture, and also another example of how it is not all the same. But it is a different encounter. Hopefully this is making sense. Alright. Uh, show of hands if y'all don't mind. Do y'all mind if I ask a question? No. Okay. That's not a question. How many people here are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Amen. Everybody? Okay. Alright, so two things here. One, either this is new for you, or this is a, this is a refreshing. Because uh, Peter says, uh, what is it, First or Second Peter, he talks about, even though you know present truth, I will not neglect that you keep yourself in remembrance and, in remembrance and keep reminding yourself. Mm -hmm. So God always wants us, even though we know, okay, I don't, I don't know how long, y'all been a believer and how long you've been baptized, even though you've been baptized for 30 years, whatever, in, in the Holy Ghost, still good as a refresher. Amen. It's, it's, Amen. it's always good to keep this fresh. 
Why? Because it says in Hebrews chapter 2 that when you don't keep it fresh, it slips. <clears throat> so if you don't keep this stuff fresh, it's going to slip your mind. That's what the word says. And that's also true with the world. The world makes sure to remind us with all these commercials, mm. all right, uh, uh, they, they keep us fresh with everything, don't they? Right. Hey, hey, right. Take this, take this, do this, do this, you know, commercial this, you know, Pizza Hut, <laughs> you, know, you know, Pepsi, you know, blah, 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 blah. How many times have you drunk a Pepsi and they're still Pepsi commercials? <laughs> like, like, I mean, I, I'm just being honest. You, you, you drunk a Pepsi or whatever thousands of times, but you still see commercials. What are they doing? Reminding you. Hey, you might have drunk it for the last 40 years, but come back tomorrow. <laughs> Amen? Same thing with Christianity. God, you know, we have to keep this stuff fresh, you know, so it doesn't slip our mind. So, sounds like this is just a refresher for everyone. All right? So, let's go to, we just went to Acts chapter 8. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Paul, on his way to Demarcus. Got blinded, going to kill Christians, got blinded, <coughs> fell off the horse. Uh, he was blind for, I think, two or three days. Had this guy Ananias come to him. The Lord told him, Acts chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is, he, he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he much he must suffer for my name's sake. Now this is a sad note. Do y'all mind if I ask you another question? <laughs> is that okay? Okay. So, I want participation if y'all don't mind. I, I want to see a show of hands. Be honest. If God told you, I'm, uh, so I'm going to show you how much great things you're going to suffer mm. for my name. Are you ready? Right. How many of y'all be like, let's go, Lord. <laughs> I'm ready. No, that's what... Thanks for being honest. Because <laughs> I wouldn't either. I'd be like, how much I'm going to suffer? I thought this was supposed to be uh, <laughs> salvation. What is... But, man, I mean, is that not a task or what? How much you're going to suffer for me? You need, my point, you need power for that kind of calling. All right? You need power to have boldness to be out to be able to uh, to go out and be a witness. Verse 17. Here's the vessel in the Holy Spirit. And I went his way and entered into his house and putting his hands on him, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the in the way of, of thou canest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now Paul was saved if you go back to uh, I think it's, it's uh, 10, 9 or 10, but anyway, when the light came and Paul fell off the horse, mm -hmm. he said, Lord? Lord? Yeah, Lord. That's all you need to be saved. Lord! I know we have altar calls and you know people pray for a half an hour and all of that and blah, blah, blah. That's fine too. All you need to be saved, Lord. Yeah. Say. <coughs> Call his name, Lord. So he was saved. Now, what did it say in verse seventeen? That and, and, and receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So if it was the same account, it would have happened when he said Lord. The fact that it did happen when he said Lord. The fact that it happened days later when Ananias was talking to him. Is just proof again that it's a separate account. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright, so let's go to, uh, we got a couple more scriptures. Again, we're just going, we're just proving and defining that baptism in the Holy Spirit is scriptural. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to chapter 11. Chapter 11 and verse 16. It says, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Two separate things. And he's just talking about when John was coming out of the wilderness and he was baptizing people and baptizing them in the water, you know, 
paving the way for Jesus. That's what he's saying. And he's saying, Jesus is the baptizer. All right? So when we lay hands on you, pray for you, if you receive it yourself, Jesus is the baptizer. It baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. Baptize just means immerse. All right? So you're immersed. Like baptizing in water, you go under the water, you know, because you're immersed with water. And that's a whole other subject. But baptize just means immersed. All right? Hebrew says there are many baptisms. So there's more than one kind of baptism. Amen? So this baptism in the Holy Spirit, Jesus is a baptizer, and then he just immerses you with the Holy Ghost so that you have power to go out and to be a witness. All right. And read 17 there to the other. Verse 17? Okay. For as much then as God gave them the light gift as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? Okay. Yep. Because what is seen in that, just to say. Yeah, go ahead. I, I don't mean, no, go ahead. You're fine. But what is seen in that is, is when they believe, mm -hmm. you see, you know, as, as Paul, he believed. He says, you know, right. uh, Paul even asked the question, what do you want me to do, Lord? Right. You know, so he believed this. So right. when we believe, yep. when we accepted Jesus yep. Christ, we were filled, you know, as, right. Right. as, as right. the scripture tells us, with right. the Holy Spirit. Right. Yep. Does that make sense, everybody? Yep. And I'm going to, and I'm going to cover this again, what, what the baptism is and isn't, but I mean, we just need it to make sense to everybody. But it sounds like everybody here is already baptized, so we just refresh refreshing. Amen. 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 So I think we got one more. Acts 13. Yeah, Acts 13. Acts 13, let's start at 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable woman and the chief men of the city and raised a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Icon. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Now, <coughs> most will say, you know, if they did it in chapter 2, how come you have to do it again? And it's just like, oh, uh, Refilling, you know, like a mm -hmm. refreshing. Yeah, a refreshing. You know, so you're, you know, like you're going through stuff, you're going through stuff, and a lot of times you just need a refreshing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, like I shave every week. You know, like I need a refreshing, and and I shower every week. Hopefully, y'all shower every week. <laughs> <laughs> a refreshing. You know, we get a haircut. You know, blah blah, blah and we go on and on. You know, yeah, I'd say weekly. To Nice, hopefully daily. daily. But there but yeah, go. but there you go. but that's the refreshing that we need, and they just needed a refreshing, you know, you know, being prayed over again, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit again, you know, just a refreshing, just being prayed over again. Amen. So those are five scriptures. Amen. At least five, maybe six, I forget the count, that covered the fact that. Being baptism in the Holy Spirit is a separate account from being from receiving salvation. Amen. This is important because iron sharp is iron. Yeah. I'm teaching y'all making disciples because you're going to get a lot of people, and again, redundantly, I'm going to cover this again in the next sessions, that you're going to get a lot of people that, for whatever reason, don't believe in baptism in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to say, yeah, it stopped with the apostles. That was only for the apostles. That's up for us now, blah, 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 blah. but what does it say in Revelation 12, 11? We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Yes. Yes. I have a testimony, and y'all have a testimony. Y'all have experienced it. Yes. Nobody can take away your testimony, what you have experienced. Mm -hmm. I have experienced it, all right? I speak in tongues on a daily. I walk in that power. I walk in that boldness. So my testimony uh, sort of demolishes the the false teaching of this stop with those apostles. Amen. And and, Amen. and and just the fact of all of these testimonies, y'all testimony as well, can sort of throw a monkey wrench in the idea of this is not for us today. And this is important because we need this to operate in power and to go about and to be witnesses. Alright? This is this is crucial. You know you can you can always do 
more, right? So when you think about the people that wasn't, because everybody wasn't, but they still have some success, there could always be more. And I always say that I, when you're baptized, you, you have just allowed the Holy Spirit, you have given them permission to come into your life and to, and to sort of be styled on you or work through you uh, limitless. You know, there is no sin, like I said before. Now you're limitless. Now you can see this. Now you should be able to do miracles like, uh, you know, land other people in Costco, you know, speak with boldness, blah, 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 and be consistent with it. Because, as y'all know, uh, we are in a battle, but we are in a battle that we won already, right? Uh, Satan is defeated, but he's not dead. Mm -hmm. Alright, so he is actively well and he's trying to. Uh, make as many distractions as he can with the believers so that we can be distracted. And I think I covered this in my spiritual warfare series is that the first line of defense is the believers and try to keep y'all away from the world. Because once he does that, then he sort of gives you your own work and lets you hang yourself. You know, that's why we say uh, the persecution part, you know, if you're not being persecuted, then you're probably not heading in the right direction. And that's what we mean by that, is that he's sort of just leaving you alone, letting you hang yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, letting you, letting you be in fear, letting you, be, uh, letting you be in doubt, whatever. And then most would say, well, I don't believe that. Well, if you don't believe that part, I would doubt that you're around me, people, if you don't think that persecution is real. I would say get more about the people. You'll get persecuted. Mm -hmm. Believe me. And it will be frustrating at times, and that's why you need that power. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, mm -hmm. this is for our benefit. <coughs> Does this make sense to everybody? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for today's session? Yeah. Good session. Pretty important. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to cover this part next time I teach, but I will continue on with the series. Amen? Yeah.